We're back with Benghazi hero Chris Tonto Peranto. I just want to say that name. Chris Tonto Peranto. Thank you. You say it better than me. You say, and I want people, hey, I, I appreciate it. I, I ain't no hero, man, but thank you. But Come on, brother. You can say the Tonto however you want. I, I like that, though. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> got a nice ring to it. Well, you, got, you got the twang going on better than me. Hey, I try. <laughs> I practice in the mirror every morning. <laughs> Oh, man. So, okay. What does 13 hours look like if you didn't get the stand down order and you guys were able to take off and go deal with things the moment you realize you needed to do it? 30 minutes. It'd be called 30 minutes, <laughs> basically. Uh, and you know, I, I testified to this to, to the Mike Rogers committee, which was a joke. That one, mm -hmm. that guy's awful, awful. Um, but also testified to the Benghazi Select Committee run by uh, Trey Gowdy. And I said, hey, we leave in the first five minutes when we want to go. We are ready in five minutes. And it was that was the beauty of that team. I mean, the team yeah. was a team was it, it was it was like an orchestra. You just a, a symphony seeing guys move leaders. The whole team were in our 40s. All of us have been in leadership positions within our respective units. And everybody shut up and did their jobs. It was gorgeous. And five minutes we're ready to go. We're told not to go. And but we get over there at the very least. We're able to do our job, which is pull Ansar Shri and Al Qaeda and the Maghreb off of the State Department guys and get them concentrating on us. That's that's just gotcha. tactics. That's yeah. just one on one stuff. A support by fire position, which is us. We're going to hit them. We're hitting them hard. That's what we do. State Department does what they're trained to do. Get the ambassador off the yeah. X to us. And it gives them a, 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 an out. And, and Dave Rubin and Scott and Alec were capable guys. They were the State Department guys. They yeah. were capable of what they were trained to do, which was protect the ambassador. They weren't trained to engage, and, and they didn't have that kind of background. Not saying they couldn't, but yeah. it does help when you when you are a SEAL or a Ranger or a Marine and you've been doing this for over, you know, at my that point in my time, my career, I've been doing it for, what, 15 years, 16 years? So that says a lot and they would have been able to get the ambassador out there. So no, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be talking. The ambassador would be saved. I'd still be working. Um, for people who don't know this, we all lost our security clearances when we told the truth, which is we figured that was going to happen. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a Mike Morrell CIA running right there, John Brennan CIA. But, um, no, we, we, it, it would have, they would have ambassador still be alive. Sean would still be alive. And I testify that and I still stand by that. And that's because not because, that we would have been able to kill them all. Yeah. It would have been, we would have pulled their attention to us. Um, I did have this smart, and this is, this is what you get in DC. I had this smart, this little smart Alec council member on the democratic side, Democrat council. He's 26, you know, he's <laughs> a lawyer guy. And he says, so <clears throat> he comes up to me and says, well, if you would have done that, what if you would have died? And I look at him and I said, and <laughs> that's what I, is that what I, I'm worried about my, I said, that's the mentality that we have here. Yeah. You're worried more about yourself. We're worried about sacrificing ourselves so others can live. I said, that's why we're having this discussion at the moment right now. And it, it just showed that the differences of where politics are and patriotism is on the other side. And that was the sad state of, of my, my view of DC over the last four years. And, and sadly it's, it's still not as much, yeah. but it's still, it's still quite like that. It's all me, me, me. I'm worried about myself. And you know what? Doesn't matter if anybody else thinks. And it's too bad because this millennial is going to be teaching people this for another 20, 25 years. And, uh, and, uh, and that's how he feels. So, uh, yeah, and it's just my little venting. I, I got my little yeah. vent out. No, I've been away, man. Because, I mean, I read, I read, I read some of the reports. And, you know, like I was listening to their reasoning <laughs> for why certain things went the same way. And they were saying everything. And, and, and as a lawyer, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to really pay attention to word choice. Yeah. And everything was there was no evidence. There was no evidence. There no was no evidence. evidence. It was just a beautiful scapegoat for well, you can't prove otherwise. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. it's like, basically, it's just reasonable. Yeah. It was Not like, that guys on the ground are telling you what, what's going on, but you know, it, they must have been watching it on Facebook, and it didn't say that on Facebook, but even though the guys are there telling you this is what happened, yeah. nah, somebody didn't tweet it. It didn't happen. Nah, couldn't have. <laughs> no, I'm, and I'm glad. Yeah, you know, and I don't think people realize this either. It's not like a. I know I'm a knuckle dragger, but I've got a I've got a couple graduate degrees out there. I don't tell nobody. Now I told everybody. <laughs> Sorry, but you know I, I I I'm a big dumb idiot, but I got some smart things going on in my head too. And, and so you just you, we utilize all of our all of our experiences, but then all of our things that we've been through in our life for that night or any yeah. other situation, so we can make a good decision before we head out the gate. But then once you get out the gate, 
you have to rely on your instincts and your training. And, and people in D.C., they don't get it. We go back to what we full circle. If it's not in their particular perfect plan and it deviates one way right or left from that plan, they can't deal with it. They can't adjust to it, and that was the same thing with the what I dealt with, even going through all these dang committees. So they just they had a had a mindset what they wanted to think, and it wasn't going to change. So let me ask you this question: <clears throat> Let's say, I'm just painting a scenario. Let's say everyone that night died. Yeah. How do you think they would have told the story? Um, that uh, we were overrun. Everybody died. Everybody tried valiant, valiantly, um, but there was nothing that we could do. And um, the CIA guys, the six contractors, uh, they probably could have quelled, the, quelled it if they wouldn't have gone over there and tried to help. <laughs> but because they did, it caused it to stir up more, and, and uh, they would have put the blame on us. That's my, that's my opinion. We yeah. would have we caught the flack yeah. um, from it. And, and uh, no, I, I, honestly, I honestly believe that. But hey, sorry, guys, that didn't happen. So guess what? <laughs> You're no longer in power. <laughs> it's, 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 it's weird because, like, so I was, I was doing some reading, and so, like, one of the quotes was, it was a tactical decision on the, of the leadership on the ground to attempt to gather more information about the attack at the mission before authorizing the team's departure. The House report said, there is no evidence to suggest that absent the delay, the team could have saved Ambassador Stevens and Sean Smith. And... Well, how do you, that's, how do you know, how do you know, unless we would have went, how do you know if we would have, unless we would have went that five minutes, you're, they're giving you that reasonable doubt. They're giving yeah. you that doubt and the creative thinkers that we don't have in this country anymore. will say, oh, you're right. I, I, I believe that that's just DC for you. And that's there in their half truths and their scuttlebutt and their, all their other things they need to do to, to, to validate their reasoning, but also put them in a, in a good light. Yeah. And, and that's a kind of crap, brother. That's what I've been dealing with for the last four years. These people, I have had a very good person, uh, that has helped at least. I think he is. I think Trey Gowdy has done a great job mm -hmm. with under the constraints that he's been in to, to help us. And he's the only one that has been honest with me throughout. I, Jason Chaffetz has been pretty good as well. But other than that, right. We have been crapped on left and right, but you know what? The people believe us. Yeah. Or I wouldn't still be here talking to you no, about it. Absolutely. We would still be going through this. Yeah, yeah, it's too big now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, if they would have just said, you know, if they would have just said, and I told them, it, behind closed doors, just tell us you're sorry. Yeah. Tell us you're sorry. I'll go away. Yeah. No. Not even, I said, not even publicly. They couldn't even do that. I'm like, okay, well then, you got Tonto now, and I'm not happy, <laughs> and I ain't going away. <laughs> it's not and gonna I, happen. And, I, if, and if Tonto in the movies is anything like Tonto is in real life. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, even I would say even multiply that times ten. I think Pablo would even tell you that too. Yeah. Huh? I, I mean, when I bite into something, I don't I don't let go until until I'm finished and I'm far from finished. Yeah, and and, and you know, going back to the movie really quickly. Um, on a lighter note, I you know, I, 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 Tonto was my favorite character. I'm, I'm not just saying that because you're you're here <laughs> now. Order. Yeah, and I would change up if somebody else referred to me. But no, it really was, and a lot of it was because of the the kind of sarcastic comic relief. Um, <laughs> you yes. know? Yeah. And I remember yes. one one uh, one part of the movie where they were scaling the wall, and, and one of the um, one of the locals. Uh, yeah, he's good kid. He was a good kid. He's like, get that rifle uh, out of my face. Jeez, amateur hour. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, every time they kept flagging me. I even, <laughs> even, I was like, even a mall kept flagging. I was like, stop pointing your gun at me. <laughs> Put it down. And that, that, but see, that, that was comical. It was. And, and I, I wasn't upset, but it was, yeah. it was, I was laughing. I was like, will you please put your damn gun out of my face? Yeah. It, but they did, no one is trying for me to, to deal with the stress, but it's also yeah. trying to make sure that, because, he doesn't get all uptight because he's already out of his element. Amal yeah. was not a combat terp. He didn't. And that happened where he said, I'm not a combat terp. I'm not weapons qualified. He said that. And I handed him my pistol. Yeah. I said, you are now. Go get your stuff. And, and, and he did. That was, that's why I tell people, and it doesn't matter. You don't have to be a SEAL or Ranger Marine Delta to do courageous things. You just have to be willing to sacrifice yourself. And that guy was more courageous, I think, than all of us because he, he didn't have to go. Yeah, he he, he was a civilian. He yeah. was not ready for this. And, he looked good in the movie. He doesn't look like that. He looks like Bob Newhart if Bob Newhart was from Egypt. That's what he looks like in real life. <laughs> no, it's you got Bob Newhart coming with us. Yeah. And that was that was that was bravery. Everybody has that in them. And they just gotta be willing Trying to push to it, it out and, and utilize it. And that's sacrifice, brother. That's that's yeah. God. That that's the irony the irony is, man, in the movie initially I kinda laughed at him. <clears throat> you know, because you know, it was kind of funny because he served as comic relief also, but as the movie went on and towards the end, you really develop a respect for him because you realize, I realized, I was like, that'd have been me. Yeah, that, <laughs> like, that, 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 he just out of nowhere and he yeah. did the right thing. And 
And I, I, I did have to break up with them. I miss that. I did break up with them when I left Libby. I love that little guy. Yeah. Um, I hope I see him again. I, I you know, I, I doubt if I ever will, but I, I believe he's still alive and I believe he's still working, but I, I, I'm not for sure. I haven't talked to him since the event. Yeah. I don't know. It seemed like, you know, and again, I preface everything I say because a lot of it was based on the movie. That's my only vantage point. No, um, I, I, I'll correct you. If something's way okay. off, I'll correct you. Okay. Don't, don't awesome. worry. Um, just the relationship between the locals and you all seemed rather tumultuous, but in a restrained kind of way. It, it's like, how? what was that dynamic like dealing with that? Because it's like you didn't know, you know who was who and what their intentions were. And I, I, you know, that, that night it was a bit tumultuous because mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're watching the firefight. You are getting shot at. You don't know who friend or foe is. They don't wear uniforms. But daily life, I'll be honest, daily life wasn't bad. I, okay. I actually got along with – because that's the beauty, and that's what's so – I love. I don't know if GRS is still the same, but at least when I was working – you're you're going in town. You're going and eating local. You're going to the coffee shops. You're going to get to know. You are the ambassadors. The ambassadors, gotcha. the guys that go out, mm -hmm. they aren't they aren't the diplomats. We are the diplomats because we are in there every day, immersed in their culture. And and most of them just they just you hear guys say this all the time that go overseas that are actually immersed in the cultures. They just want to live their lives. Yeah. That's all they want to do. But then they get caught in the in the in the Islamists. The Islamists they get caught with the terrorists. And they can't fight back because they got nowhere to go. Yeah. And if they do fight back, they're dead. And and they're not willing to do it. So they're willing to basically be sheep and say, well, whatever you want us to do is don't cut my head off. That's why when we're there, we do get some respect. But then we do crap like we do in Libya where that happens. And what do we do? We pull up chocks and leave. Yeah. And now and Libya's it, a failed it's, state. It's, and now now they hate us. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's imploded. Same as Syria. Look what what's going on in Syria. Um, and and that's, that is, that's why... When we go over to the countries, at least initially, mm -hmm. when you first go into these places, there is some uh, there is some animosity because they're like, oh, Americans are just going to come basically party at our house and they're going to leave, leave and yeah. leave, leave the mess for us to clean up with. But that night in particular, yes, yeah. very tumultuous because you, <laughs> you don't know. Yeah, you, you had no clue who's who's until they're shooting at you, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. and that and that that's another thing where this is a great lead for for with the NRA doing this here with you yeah. is. Our rules of engagement there under that oh, administration were very hindering. We we had just saw what happened to the Blackwater guys at Nishar Square. Some of those guys are still in prison for yeah. shooting back, for, for shoot after getting shot at. And so we had to hold, and that takes a lot of restraint. I don't think people realize how much restraint it takes to, you want to pull the trigger. And there's that, there's that there was that scene, and it was correct, where a guy drove up in the car, my red dot's on his forehead, and I'm like, I want to shoot him in the face. And I'm saying that to Roan. I want to shoot this guy in the face. Roan's saying, don't shoot unless you see a gun. You don't shoot unless you see a gun. Because yeah. if I shoot and it's a bad shoot, then you're done. I'm getting prosecuted. Yeah. I'm going to prison. Yeah. And, and that's the, you don't want to fight wars like that. Yeah. Hopefully we don't have to do that anymore with the, this administration. Yeah. I hope not. Absolutely. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back and we'll talk some more.